Hello, everyone. Welcome to Radio Free Decipher. This is Evan Lorenz, joined as always by Kyle Hoyer. Yo. And today we have a special guest, uh, Vice President of the Game Studio, Tim Ellington. <sighs> And they pulled me out of mothballs again. They don't let me do this like once a year. Yeah. Well, the reason for that is because you have such a thick accent that nobody can understand you. So <laughs> let's get right to the point. Um, today we have you on the show because you have information that we want. Yeah. Right off the bat, we, we should warn our regular listeners that there's going to be more content here than you're probably <laughs> accustomed to. And, and for that, we are truly sorry. For those who, who are expecting to hear us talk about 24 and pineapples, that may have to wait until next week. I'm not going to do it. Then. Okay. Uh, <laughs> as long as there's no whale song. Anyways. Uh, okay. um, uh, yes, uh, as we were saying. So you are here today to give us a little bit of information about the new game that we're coming out with that is based on the old Star Wars CCG game mechanic. Yes. So, um, well, first off, let's uh, let's get a little bit of... Um, uh, maybe can you tell us uh, why we're doing this now and, and what the impetus was? Yeah, Tim, why are we doing this now? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> yeah, well, you know, we were at Gamma and we had a little bit too much to drink. and we thought, That uh, was the joke. Yeah, I'm sure yeah, it cause was. It shocked all of us here in the office because we knew it was coming down, but uh, when you guys announced it at Gamma, we were all like, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, timing is really one of the main things. Um, we were looking at, we had always been looking at ever since, um, you know, the license was pulled mm -hmm. about um, possibilities of doing this. So we, you know, thought about different opportunities to do it. We looked at different licenses that mm -hmm. we might could use it for. We um, thought about different proprietary ends. Nothing ever really had clicked. You know, we didn't have a real fundamental plan. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, over the course of, you know, several months, we batted around a few ideas, and then, you know, when we were at Gamma, uh, Warren and I were talking, and some of the things just kind of fell into place, and uh, we said, well, yeah, this seems like it's the right time to do this now, and we think we've got the plan that will allow us to do it mm -hmm. in a way that uh, will be both uh, satisfactory for the players mm -hmm. and also something we can do, you know. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of a pioneering thing for Decipher, too, right. so we had to work out some things within Decipher to be able to... Um, do something at this scope and scale, and um, and we also felt like that you know the longer we wait, the less likely you know more and more people would either get out of gaming or mm -hmm. wouldn't have the same nostalgic value for the game. Sure. So it was just it was a good time for us to do it, and um, we finally put some of the pieces in place for us to pull it off. So let's let's uh, let's hit right away that uh, big point about why this is uh, big and different in scope. This would be our first uh, unlicensed. Trading card game. Yes, it would. Okay. So being unlicensed, that means that. Um, can you tell us? Uh, are we going to have? Um, is, is it going to be based on something that we're already familiar with? Is it going to be based on something that is uh, going to have some backstory, which is something we haven't seen before? Is it going to be country western? Is it going to be tic tac toe? Yeah, sci-fi. No. What what are we looking at here? It's going to be something that's a sci-fi property. Okay. Um, it is going to be completely original. Um, it's something that we have come up with internally here at Decipher. Um, not to say we haven't had some you know outside influence. Um, okay. I think. Uh, what do you mean by outside influence? Well, um, we've talked to a couple of people outside to try to get some parameters set for what we wanted to try to accomplish. Um, we have worked some with Mike Stackpole. Great. Um, to help us sort of get a direction going. Um, we've been doing a lot of um, you know, backstory work, a lot of um, preparation for the property, both in-house and working with Mike. And, um, you know, currently the plan is, is that uh, when we launch the game, we'll also launch um, some accompanying fiction with the game just to give people a sense of, you know, what the real backstory is, what the flavor is, and give um, a little bit of meaning to some of the characters they're going to see on the cards. Very cool. Okay. And, and is Mike going to be helping with that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's great. Mike, big fan of Mike. Yeah, listeners out there, I, I think most people will probably recognize Mike Stackpole's name, but he has written a lot of 
Uh, he writes a lot sure, <laughs> of sure. books. Uh, many of them are licensed. He bobs in and out of many other people's universes, including the Star Wars universe, right. the Mech Warrior universe. And um, we've Decipher has worked with Mike Stackpole in the past because he actually has a Star Wars card. Yes, he is Corrin Horn. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he he has definitely got got the background for this sort of thing. We haven't worked out a deal with Mike yet to give him a card for the new game. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you never know. We could work something out. At some sure, point. sure, absolutely. Yeah. Now, one of the things too that will be different for us with this is that uh, card art is going to be illustrated. It's not going to be photographed. Oh, this is the first card game we've done with illustrated art. Right. And this so. is not going to be photorealistic per se material as some of the original created images we have done in our games like uh, Lord of the Rings and Star Wars in the past. No, it will be um, it will be something that you're more familiar with from an illustrated standpoint. Now, okay. we hope to have a high quality of illustration. Sure, absolutely. absolutely. Um, but it's not going to be photorealistic. Okay. Okay. Now, you said that there, it's going to be a sci-fi slant. Does that mean it's going to be a terrestrial sci-fi thing or an extraterrestrial sci-fi thing? Yes. Ooh. Interesting answer. Okay. Okay. Um, can you, at this point, um, uh, now you said that we're going to be doing a lot of artwork for this. Do we have some people that we're targeting? Um, have we looked at some people's artwork? Have we nailed anybody down at this point? We have talked with uh, several illustrators. In fact, we're in the process right now of recruiting a, an illustrator base. A lot of the work will be done in-house with our own illustrators, and everybody's familiar with the quality of artwork that we've produced year in and year out in sure. the industry. But, you know, it's a big volume of stuff. We can't produce it all. Right. So a lot of stuff will be found out, and um, I'm really happy to say that we've uh, worked out a preliminary deal with John Howe of Lord of the Rings. Holy um, cow! Renowned to do some conceptual art for us, okay, and to help us with some of the original design work. So uh, I think Whoa. that's going to surprise some people to see the level of detail and quality we want to build into this, and uh, we're really excited to work with John with this. Now, now again, for those people that aren't maybe aware of who John Howe is, he's the guy that did all the conceptual uh, work for the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Well, yeah. Not all of it, but a lot sure, of it. Sure, much sure. of it. He was one of the large contributors in that and has been right, illustrating right. Tolkien and many other uh, you sure. know, uh, universes for many years. Wow, yeah. that's incredible. Yeah. That so, is really exciting. So we are, you know, like I said, we're looking beyond just the decipher doors for some input. Um, we want to make sure that when we bring this out, it's done at a quality level that people have come to associate with the cyber products mm -hmm. and a creative level that they've come to expect from us. Um, we don't want to go into this, you know, kind of half-hearted or without looking at staking this in as a, as a really dominant, you know, product line for us for years to come. Okay. A lot's going into this and we would expect to get a lot out of it. Good. Great. Now, there's going to be a lot of people listening to this that are fans of our old game, and I'm sure there's a lot of questions out there on how similar is this to the old Star Wars game that produced? How similar are the mechanics? What what can you say is is being scrapped, and what is new, and what is the same? Well, I think it will be unmistakably Star Wars engine that okay. people know. Um, there won't be any you know, really question mark about that. Okay. But I do think it's important for people to understand that what we're coming out with is not what the next set of the Star Wars game would have been. Okay. It's um, it's a new game, and it uses the Star Wars mechanic, but it's not Star Wars with different pictures. Okay. So, um, and what I mean by that is we want to try to, you know, address some of the issues that you know were sticking points in the game before. Um, some creature rules. Issues. Uh, okay, <laughs> creature rules. Well, that, that's uh, a small one. Yeah. Out of all the things you could have picked, <laughs> speaking as the person who has been doing some of the research yeah. on uh, that. Right. But, but that's, the ki that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. What we want to do is make some subtle improvements to the game to both help the ability to teach the game, to make it play a little smoother, um, minimize some of the rules baggage that we had accumulated in Star Wars over six years, and increase diversity. Yes. And, um, and in one way that we're doing that, too, and probably the biggest um, aesthetic change that people will notice is that we're going to a one-deck, one-back system. Oh, so there won't be a light side and dark side anymore? Not it's anymore. anymore. Just one yeah. card back. One okay. card back, uh, and you'll build one deck for your tournament deck. Um, and well, uh, that'll save a lot of people a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and we feel like... We're doing this for a couple of reasons. One, um, it minimizes the overhead to get into the game initially and play. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to build two tournament viable decks 
the first month you're out trying to play in some of those right. tournaments. The second thing is, is the one back system is going to give us the ability to deliver the Star Wars mechanic in a way that is going to make it draftable, you know, legitimate draft format for the first time. Oh, that's great. And I think that's going to be something that the players are really going to appreciate. Um, and we're looking at some um, interesting dynamics in terms of the gameplay mechanics and how we deliver that to make it um, work that way. But we feel like it will be our best draftable product that we've ever done. Right out of the box, right without the having box. any ancillary product like the draft pack or right. or anything like that. Wow, that's really good. Yeah. That's really good. So um, I'm sure, uh, Evan, you've got some questions that you can uh, pop in here. Uh, n- no, I'm good. I, I have my answer, so ask away. <laughs> <laughs> Evan's well, not allowed to ask questions about this. <laughs> he knows too much. Yeah. No, I know answers, and I don't know if I'm allowed to ask the question. So you go, and, and I'll keep putting well, Tim uh, on the spot. Well, okay, <laughs> one, of the, one of the last questions that I really have, which is probably um, uh, another one that a lot of people have been curious about, because... Everybody out there has been calling this the quote Star Wars CCG, me- you know, game engine right. game mm-hmm. or, or or you know mechanic game. Uh-huh. Do we have a real name for it at this point? We do. Um, are, are we going to be you know uh, letting the cat out of the bag with this? <laughs> well, I suppose the cat's ready to come out. All right, <laughs> um, let's let's do it. Well, let me give you a little background okay, on, sure. on the name behind sure. this, too. Um, one of the things we wanted to do with the name was to um, identify it to the potential customer base. Okay. Um, you know, it's, if you made a new car model, the Mustang, and you renamed it the, you know, the, the Colt, it wouldn't necessarily feel the same. You know, so okay. um, what we did was with this is we wanted to come out with a, a branding signature that people would recognize. Um, but we want to make our own thing. So what we have decided to do is call this game um, Wars, the Moomon Rip. Wars, okay. Yeah. And um, the Moomon Rip will become a significant piece of the puzzle in the backstory, and what people will find out is the catalyst behind a lot of the gameplay and a lot of the reasons for the action in the story and in the game. Okay. Um, can, is there any of that backstory you can give us here, or maybe a, a reason... <laughs> <laughs> Once again, put me on the spot here. Yeah, you know, I could. What I wish I could do is let everybody sit in all the meetings I've had about how to name this thing for the last, uh, you know, several weeks, and uh, they would understand just what a tedious process it can be. Sure. What is this Moomon thing? The Moomon Rip um, basically represents some. Um, uh, it, it has a, a grounding in some Zen philosophy background. Um, there was a. a, 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 a I don't know if it was Chinese, but I think it was a Chinese monk um, named Mumon, who um, real guy, not real not, guy. not fake thing for the story. This no, is not, a real no, guy. This is a real guy. So I can go on the internet and look up Mumon. Yes, you can. How do you spell that? M U M O N. Mumon. All right. I'm sure everybody's you know got their second window open right now and starting to search for Mumon. Right. Well, the premise that he introduced in his philosophy was that of the gateless gate. And I'm not going to go into a lot of that because if you're interested, I'll let you look that up yourself. But that's kind of what the underpinning of um, the story is going to be. It's going to be about this rip in space, a gateless gate of sorts that um, creates some that, interesting that dynamics. That action happens around. Yeah, okay. it creates some interesting dynamics um, in a world that's approximately 400 years in our future. So that there's where the terrestrial and extra... Okay, got it. Got it. Interesting. Move on. I'm going to do some research there. Should be good. All right. So, um, now you said that you wanted to have it have some roots that make it so that everybody can sort of identify with it, and that's where the the wars thing I think comes in. But right. maybe it also that's you know you're thinking that maybe a lot of our players are Chinese monks. No. Is that mm-hmm. is that how that works? No, no, not this time. <laughs> um, like I said, the gameplay is going to be unmistakable. Um, sure. When you sit down to play it, you know, the flow of the force, right. mechanic will be there, uh, destiny draws, movement, um, a use pile, loss pile, um, you know, the character-centric battle, you know. Mm-hmm. All of that stuff that you played in the Star Wars mechanic will be there. 
And what a brilliant name then to just call it Wars, since everybody <laughs> called it that already, you know, for years and years. Right. But, you know, at the same time... But it gives it an identifier right. that sets it apart and, yeah. you know... Yeah, this, this, this isn't Star Wars. You know, it's our sure. thing. And, um, but, you know, we want to make sure that people have a comfort level in introducing them to the new universe. And, um, and we wanted to do that in a way that was both a positive for the players and something that we could brand as a Decipher brand mm -hmm. and um, going forward because we really feel very excited about the concept and um, I'm really excited about what the potential art's going to be. Um, I've seen some of the um, some of the um, style guide that they've had downstairs and it's incredible stuff. Yeah, I, I can't I can't wait to see what what they do. Yeah, it's 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 interesting for us because even being at the ground level when we get together and have a meeting and, and somebody's introducing some new pieces to the puzzle that just kind of gets us all excited about it. The other great thing about this is that there's no licensing problems. We don't have to, you know, we don't have to say this person has, you can only show him from here and here and you have to get this actor's approval to get that and you don't, you know, and this, if you show this, you have to show that. We, we don't, we're not bound by any of that. It basically, as far as our imagination can take us, Right. That's where we're going. Right. It allows us to introduce whatever level of character we want to introduce, mm -hmm. um, whatever quantity we want. We don't have to worry about a shortage of images of ships. Now or how many different stormtroopers can you make? How many, do, you know? As many as we can have drawn. Exactly. So, um, you know, and, and that's exciting for us because it, it eliminates some of the constraints that a license brings. Now, licenses bring pluses to it. Absolutely. You know, no doubt. Absolutely. But Eventually, you run out of images. Eventually, you run you know, thin on the storyline. This gives us the ability to create new story, new cards, you know, for Without years limit. and years and years. And nobody can take it away from us. That's right. It's good stuff. So come on, Evan. I know there's a button you need to push. No, I'm, I, I, I got nothing to say. I'm excited. <laughs> well, this is a change, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, very much. Yeah, when Evan is speechless, that's, that's news for us. Well, I, you know, for me, it's all the work end of it. <laughs> like, for example, one of my projects has been uh, to go through the Star Wars uh, CCG glossary entry by entry and figure out what happened that this entry is here. Why is it here? Could this have been done simpler? Could we have worded it better? Do we need this? Does this add to the diversity of the game? And, and ask those kind of questions on every single entry for the 100-plus page glossary. So for everyone out there just dying to be a designer or developer for a game, see what people do to you? That's what <laughs> that's what you have to look forward to. And who is the person that did this to you? Who's your boss? Uh, that would that would be our guest today. Tim oh, Ellington. well done, Tim. Way to make him speechless. It's a gift. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. All right, well, um, thanks, Tim, so much for coming in and talking about all this information. I hope we don't all get fired because we... Um, uh, talk too much about it, but uh, we'll see. And uh, thanks, everyone, for listening, and I hope you really enjoyed this. I think it's uh, really exciting stuff, and uh, I'm really excited about the future. So have a great weekend. Thanks very much, guys.